Dr. Biao Zhang uh, received his uh, PhD degree in mechanical engineering from the Hong Kong University of Science Technology uh, in 2013. Uh, he did postdoc uh, in France uh, before joining Purdue uh, in the AP department at, as an assistant professor in uh, 2010, uh, 2017. Sorry, 2017. Dr. Zhang's research focused on advanced materials for the uh, electro energy storage devices. His recent work is devoted to design and improve the electrode electrolyte interfaces for. Uh, potassium and zinc ion batteries. So let's welcome Professor Dr. Zhang. Dr. Zhang, please. Okay, so thank you for the introduction. So can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, very clear. Okay, thanks. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Biao Zhang from the Department of Applied Physics in Hong Kong PolyU. So I'm also the co-organizer of this workshop. I thank the support from the speakers and the audience. Today, I'm glad to share my recent study on the solid electrolyte interfaces uh, for the sodium and the potassium and batteries. Here, I give a little bit of the background. So we know that the energy is very important in our society. We are shifting from the classical fossil fuels to the clean energies. So our, uh, we expect that we can clean, uh, we can collect the clean energy from the nature and then we store it in the energy storage devices, typically in the batteries, and then we can put it into the uh, diverse applications, such as uh, the, for the uh, electrical vehicles, for the portable electronics, and some of them will go into the stationary energy storage. But uh, if we see from this uh, data, actually for this, uh, we call the stationary edge storage they only occupy a little bit of the market. And uh, you may ask, so what is the major technologies are using in the SES? Actually over 95% of this, of this is occupied by the very classical technology. This is the pump storage hydroelectricity. Because this one is uh, uh, the maintenance is uh, very low, but uh, also this one has some of the additional requirements in the geographical height and the water availability. So the capital cost for the installment of this technology is very expensive. So this one makes this one very difficult to be used in some of the specified areas, such as uh, for the remote areas for the household using. So battery has uh, more than one changes for such applications, but uh, here now, why the application in this field is very low, so because of the cost, but now nowadays there's a cost for the for the for the batteries to be used in these large scale applications is still very limited. So that's a reason. In the recent years, people try to shift from the lithium to the sodium and the potassiums for the application in the large scale applications because of the cost in the later two technologies. And if we look into the look back into the history, the sodium and the potassium ion batteries is not a new technique. Actually, these two type of batteries are investigated together with the lithium batteries in the 1980s. But later on, people abandoned these two because of the disadvantages on the energy density. This is very simple because we can see for the sodium and, po and the potassiums, and the, the atomic weight is much larger than the lithium. And also the radius of sodium and potassium is also larger than the lithium. That makes it more difficult to design the host materials for these two batteries. And in the nowadays, since around 2010, and the people found that this one because of the cost in the lithium batteries increase a lot. And then people try to look back into, into the sodium and the potassium because of the advantages in the natural abundance. And we also develop some of the castles, for example, for the pony anionic cathode or the Prussian blue cathode. So this kind of castles do not have the cobalt or the nickel in the, in the materials, so we can further reduce the fabrication cost. So the reason, as a short summary, that we want to shift from lithium to sodium and potassium. So the first thing is that we can have an alternative technologies with a low cost, although 
uh, we are going to sacrifice a little bit of the energy density. The other thing that we want to look at the fundamental things because both the lithium, sodium, and the potassium, the intercalation chemistries are very similar. So we want to know the fundamental understanding how this we, once we increase a little bit of the the ionic radius, what will happen to the in the in the collision chemistry? And uh, now here we have in the past several years we have developed a lot of the cathode materials and the anode materials. And uh, today we are not going to uh, introduce a lot on the electrode materials. Instead, we we'll focus on the solid electrode interfaces. So what is the solid electrode interfaces? And if we look at the, the batteries, so this is the first cycle for a full cell. When we charge it, we get a capacity for here around 120. But when we discharge it, you can see we cannot fully recover. Some of the charges has been consumed due to the interface formation on the surface of the anode. That's why we call the solid electrode interfaces, the SEI. So this, this is the major topic we are going to discuss today. And uh, you may see, this, of course, this one we're going to decrease the energy density. And uh, you, may, you may think this one is uh, not a good thing. But if we look at uh, the energy diagram of the electrode, we should say if we want to go to the higher voltage, this is the cost that we must pay. Because of the, if, we, if we look at uh, the Fermi energy and also the, the electrochemical window of electrolyte, if we want to go to the very low potential at the cathode side, we must have something to protect the anode. Okay? Because this redox potential for the anode is outside of the stability of the electrolyte. That's why in the first cycle, you're going to have electrolyte decomposed to form a thin layer on the anode. This SEI layer, we're going to prevent the continuous decomposition of electrolyte. So with this one, we want to have this layer to be ionic conductive but an uh, electron insulator. So this is, uh, as I said, this is a trajectory to have the high voltage to achieve the high energy density of modern batteries in the organic, organic electrolyte. But this one, the SEI can also be a problem if this SEI is not a very good design. So as I, I show in here, so in the first cycle, we're going to form a thin layer covering the surface of the anode materials, but if this layer is not very stable in the falling cycles, if this one is a break, what will happen is here we are going to have a naked surface again to contact with the electrolyte. So we're going to form an SEI again on the same surface. And we're go going to continue to consume the charges provided by the cathode. And this we're going to result in the faster capacity degradation. So here for the SEI, we want to have a thin SEI formed on the surface in the first cycle, and we hope this SEI to be stable. But uh, this can be challenging because we know when the charges intercalated into the electrode materials, we're going to have volume expansion. So this volume expansion, we're going to have the stress on the SEI. So how we can maintain this SEI to be stable? And this kind of stress uh, will be more severe in the some of the high capacity anodes. Okay. So when we look at here, if we want to achieve the high energy, we want to go for the high capacity anodes. Okay, so here I summarize the typical anodes you, you can de develop in the potassium ion batteries in the past several years. And here, because we have two things. So first thing, because we shift from lithium to the sodium and the potassium, because of the larger radius of the sodium and the potassium ions, so this volume expansion will be bigger normally will be bigger than in the lithium counterparts. And the other thing, if we want to go from this carbon materials to this anode materials, we can see from here for the antimony or for the bismuth, we have a very high capacity. We can bring a lot of the energy increase uh, if we can utilize this anode anodes. But this anode anodes, we have high capacity. That means we can uptake more potassium or sodium ions. Okay, so with this more, integration of the potassium ions, we are going to have a much larger volume expansion than the carbon, carbon materials. And we are going to have more stress on the SEI layer. So can we stabilize this SEI? And if we do not stabilize this, what will happen? Okay, so when we give a first example is about the tin anode in the sodium ion batteries. 
So here we just use uh, the commercial tin powder and we mix it with the carbon to make uh, the uh, taper electrode. And we cycle in the very classical electrolytes with the NATF6 in the PC solvent. And we add a 5% of FEC to stabilize the sodium metal. Okay. What you can see here before and after cycle, you're going to see some of the particles has been broken into the small pieces. And if we look into the details, you can even see after several cycles, the particles has been pulverized. Okay. And as a result, we're going to see this the capacity will be degraded, degraded very fast. In only 10 cycles, the capacity has been de decreased from over 600 to only uh, 100. Okay, and then we want to see why, why we have this kind of uh, degradation. So we look at the, the volume, because we always say this is the volume expansion that induces the stress on the SEI and this SEI break, or the particle also can be break into small pieces. So we want to look at how, how much volume expansion will be induced during the annoying and the de-annoying de de processes. So we use the X-ray in CT X-ray to track the phase transition during the solidation and the desolidation. So here we start from the tin powder, and then when we discharge it, some of tin, some of sodium will be integrated. We're going to have some of phases formed, and then we want to look at the phase transition. So we want to analyze that each new phase appears during the discharge. And some of the phases we can find is amorphous. So we do a little bit of the thermal linearity to increase the crystallinity, and then we can identify the, uh, uh, the detailed crystal structures. And uh, for some of the phases, for example, these phases, okay, and uh, at the beginning, we, allow, we, we, we do not know the detailed composition of these phases. Because in the electrochemical cell, we cannot can, uh, accurately probe the chemical compositions. You know that in the in the in the in the batteries, although we can calculate the how many sodium integrated, but this in the batteries we have the side reactions. That means some of sodium is consumed. So we not, we cannot probe the accurate value of sodium in the in the tin alloys. So what we we did is that we 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 try to synthesize these phases by chemical synthesis. Okay. So for in during the chemical synthesis, so we can accurately know the composition of the sodium and the tin, and then we do the, in, do the synchrotron X-ray to analyze the crystal structures. And then we further discharge, we reach the final phase, that is the sodium 15 and tin 4. That is for, for, for every tin atom, you can, they can uptake around the 3.75 sodium, okay? Okay, and then during the charge, so all the sodium will be extracted and it can be returned to the team phases. So from this in situ test, actually we get a lot of emissions. For example, in here, you found, see, you found here we have a spike here. So actually, if you look at the X-ray patterns, this spike is due to the, the phases transformed from amorphous to the crystalline phases. Okay. And also the most important information we obtained is about the phase transition process. And with this detailed phase transformation, we can identify the phases appear during the discharge. We can analyze the volume uh, of each phases, and we can calculate the volume expansion during the discharge. And from this sodium tin solidation process, you can find that we're going to have over 400% of the volume change during the fully discharge. And this, with this, we can easily understand why we're going to have the faster capacity degradation and a very low quantum efficiency. Because of this is a huge volume expansion. If this SEI is not that stable, because this SEI is only in several nanometers, okay, you're going to have this SEI break. And also some, sometimes uh, accompanied with the breakage of the active particles. Okay. Now, with this one, now we have several choices. First, now we want to, we want to stabilize this uh, SEI. Now we can do from the two different approaches. The first one is that we look at the active materials. We can design the nanostructures and the them to alleviate the stress on the SEI. Okay, this strategy is very popular uh, in at the time when, when I was doing my PhD studies. 
So at that time, we do a lot of work on this nanostructure design on the active materials. For example, for this tin, we can put the nano size tin on the nano carbon materials, for example, in the graphene on the carbon fiber. In here, we, 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 we have put a lot of the free spaces between the particles. So we provide the additional spaces for the particles to expand and the contraction during the charge. Okay. With this one, actually, we can stabilize the cyclic performance of the NOE, NOE anodes. But some of the problem associated with this strategy is that, so first, you need to add a, a significant part of nanocarbon carbon into your electron materials. And this nanocarbon, carbon, the one thing is that you're going to reduce the volumetric energy density, right? Because the density of carbon is not that high. The other thing is that with this nanocarbon, carbon, we have very high surface area. This high surface area in the first cycle, you're going to have a lot of SER to be formed. And you are going to consume a lot of sodium or the potassium ions and resulting into a very low quantum efficiency. Okay, and that's why for this kind of strategy is uh, gradually abandoned by the community. Oh, of course, some of, the, some of the researchers are still working on this one. They're trying to increase uh, the loading of the, uh, of the NOE particles and that they try to densify the electron materials. This is also very attractive. And uh, when after I joined into the PolyU to start my independent career, I tried to look into another approach. That's why we, in that one, we want to focus on the SER itself. And uh, we deviate from the previous non-structure design of the active materials. We start from the micro size particles, the commercial particles. For example, here, this is for the team particles, the commercial one in the tens of micrometers. And uh, we do not do much treatment. We only bore milled with the carbon SP to attach the carbon uh, conductive onto the surface to increase the conductivity. And then we try to regulate the SEI on the surface. So if we can make this SEI to be stronger enough, then in the cycle, in the, in the cycle we're going to have this SEI to encapsulate the active materials. If this SEI is stable, and then we can increase a lot in the cyclic stabi stability. And uh, luckily, we do find some of the examples that we can build such an stable SEI to stabilize the micro size the particles. For example, here, here we change it. We want to, because we want to regulate the SEI. So we try to engineer the interface from the electron light. So as I, I showed before, in the previous need, we use the carbon as the electrolyte. Here we change into the, the ether, ether electrolyte, the glime. Okay, here I show the molecular structure of the glime. So normally you have the oxygen collected to the two alkyl groups. And then, so what we see here is that you see here in the first cycle where you have a very high Olympic efficiency of over 90%. Okay. And then the cyclic stability is, all, is also very stable. You see here in this, in this one, we achieve almost the theoretical capacity for the team particles. So again, uh, uh, we want to emphasize here, we only change the, the electrolyte to modify the SEI instead of for, uh, doing the nanostructure design of electrode materials. Okay. And then this is very amazing. So we want to see what happened to this SEI. So first we recycled for 100 cycles. You can see here, it's quite stable, even with the micro size particles. And we look at the SEM at that time, we see we have something covered on the surface. So we assume this one is the reason why we can stabilize this one, uh, the, the, the particles. And if we look into the chemical composition by the SPS, this SEI from the SPS, we do not have much differences between the carbonate electrolyte. Still, it composed of the organic and the inorganic species. And uh, they have some of the differences in the relative amounts. But at that time, we do not have any detailed uh, analysis because uh, at that time, we, are not going, we, we do not have the technical to disclose the nanostructures of SEI. And uh, another thing is that uh, what's the mechanical properties of this SEI? At that time, we also do not have, we do not have a clear answer. So, but uh, we do can stabilize the micro size particles with only the modification of the electron system. So, so now at this time, we have a lot of questions 
that's why after I joined the, the Point EU uh, in 2017, I tried to further analyze what happened to this uh, SEI and uh, how we can, we can disclose the detailed non-structures and the mechanical properties. And uh, before we do that, we want to know whether this system is only applicable to the team particles in the sodium batteries. So could they be extended to the other batteries and also to other anode anodes? So this is the first work after I joined the point of view. I tried to analyze whether we can stabilize other anode anodes in the potassium ion batteries. Here we're still using the micro-sized particles with the bismuth. And uh, if you use the classical electrolyte because of the large particle size here, we're going to see you have a very fast capacity degradation in the classical ECPC electrolyte. And we try to add some of the FEC as we did in the sodium ion batteries but still we can see very clear degradations. And then we we'll try the glyme electrolyte as we use in the sodium ion batteries and we found a very fascinating result. So here you can see here again, we can also obtain a very high economic efficiency and the cyclical stability is also quite good as shown here for at least for 100 cycles, okay? And the weather capability is also uh, very attractive. And if we, we use this business micro, micro size particles as, the, as the anodes in the potassium ion batteries, we try to couple with the typical Prussian blue cathode, we can achieve energy density. So, what I see is we show it here is around the, theoretically, we can go to over 300. Okay. But this is, uh, this is only based on the mass of the active materials, it's in, on the electrode level instead of in the cell level. But this one is, all, is quite close to the, uh, to the value for the sodium ion batteries now. So then we want to know, so why we change from the carbonate to the glyme neutralite, we can modify, we can increase uh, the cyclical stability a lot. So whether we change the phase transformation process. So again, we did the X-ray diffraction and because we found here in the, in the first cycle, you can see here, the voltage profile is different from the second and the third cycle. So the first thing we want to understand how this phase transformation uh, take place in the glam electrolyte. And what we see here, because we are using the large size particles, actually in the first cycle, this uh, phase transformation do not follow the thermodynamic path. So you see in the first cycle, you're going to be fully potassiated in the surface and then slowly go into the interior of the particles. But in the following cycles, we're going to have the thermodynamic passes. You go from the, the business first and then you're going to have KBI2 and K3BI2 and finally you go into the K3BI. So each of the business atom can uptake three potassium ions. And if we look at the volume expansion based on the phases, we resolved. What we can see here, you still have 400% of volume expansion. So that means that even you change from the carbon electrolyte to the glamine electrolyte, so the, the phase transformation is still the same. You still have a lot of stress on the particles. Okay, so why it can, can stable? We look at the, the TM. Indeed, we, we can see the SEI form the covering on the surface of the active materials. And uh, when compare the SPS compositions, and we found in the glime, you're going to have more uh, organic species forming in the diagram, diagram electrolyte compared to the carbonate electrolyte. At that time, we proposed that we are going to have some of the elastomers formed on the SEI because based on the structures of the solvents, okay? We, we, we assume this elastomers should be much stable, has much higher flexibility then the SEI formed in the carbon electrolyte. But, but still at that time, some of the reviewers question a lot about uh, whether we have any evidence on this part, okay? And then we we in the, in the, in the, in the, in the following studies, so we try to resolve what kind of SEI formed on, the, on this glam electrolyte and uh, how about the mechanical properties. And before we do that, we also, found some other systems that can be stabilized by the SEI approach. For example, here for the antimony 
microsized particles. Here we also find a special electrolyte. So previously we used the glime, such as the DME. Now we change a little bit into the EGDEE. So we only change it. This one's all also belongs to the ether, but with the different ending groups from, from here. You see here this is CH3 to the CH2, CH, CH3. So with this one, we can also stabilize this micro-sized and antimony particles. And uh, we also found this one, the ESA electrolyte, we can also use it in the carbon anodes. Although this carbon anodes has less volume expansion than the anode anodes, but still we found that the benefits of using the ESA in stabilizing the cycle stability and to increase uh, the rate capability. Okay, so with this one now, you can see this kind of a phenomenon is not, is not only applicable to the team particles. We have demonstrated, so this kind of SEI recognition can be used to stabilize a lot of uh, anode anodes with large volume expansion. So as I said before, uh, still when we submit the paper, a lot of the reviews question the detailed non-structures of the SEI and the mechanical stability. That's why, so we collaborated with uh, my colleagues in our department, Dr. Zhu Ye. So he is an expert on the TM. So we use uh, the cryo TM to look into the detailed non-structure of the interface because this SEI is sensitive to the electron beams. So that's why we need to do in the cryo TM, we want to see what's the detailed non-structures because we all, we, we all know that the SEI is composed of the organic and the inorganic particles but the distribution is also very important and also the crystallinity, right? So here, what we can see here in the classical carbonate, carbonate electrolyte, you see here, we have a very thick SEI and we have the crystalline particles such as the sodium carbonate dispersed in the organic species. In the glam electrolyte, what we can see here is very thin, but it's almost uh, amorphous. Also, we have the inorganic particles that are amorphous, and dis disperse in the organic species. Okay, and another thing is about uh, the organic species because in the in here we do not have much information about uh, the organic species. Here we do some of uh, very simple theoretical studies to figure out the possible decomposition route for the solvents. From here we are going to see because of the differences between the ether and the carbonate. Actually, in the glam electrolyte, in the ether electrolyte you're going to have this kind of species formed during the decomposition. This one is something like the very small organic species uh, with, uh, with, the, with very small the molecular weight. So we call it the, the, the oligomers. So this one, will, normally it will have the high flexibility than the species formed in the DMC or the EC uh, solvents. Okay, so this is uh, what's the so this is the nanostructure we resolved by the cryo TM and some of the possible decomposition route for the solvents, and then still we want to answer whether this kind of SEI can have the high mechanical prob probability to support the volume expansion. Right, this is our initial objective, and now before we do that, we want to answer one question. What kind of mechanical properties we want to stabilize the microsized particles? Okay, so for very simple models here, so we have in the community we have some different parameters has been utilized. The most widely used is the Yas modulus. So if we make this SEI to be hard, so some will think it can constrain the volume, volume expansion. And another parameter is that is about the the strain, the elastic strain, that is the strain before the before the yielding. So if we have a very higher elasticity, so theoretically we can also improve the stability of the SEI during the expansion. Right? So this is uh, the typical properties we, we want, the Young's modulus and uh, the yielding strains. And of course, we do not want to have the plastic deformation. Because once you have the plastic deformation, you, are, you cannot recover in the following cycles. And then uh, along with the accumulation of the plastic deformation, uh, you are going to have the separation between the SEI and the negative particles. We're going to lose the, uh, the 
the collections. And this also we can, we are going to need the capacity degradation during the cycling. And here, because of the, we have the debate on the reach of the mechanical properties. So we want to, we figure, we, we develop a model to see under the stress condition in this uh, animal materials, what kind of the properties can be best utilized to reflect the stability in resisting the volume expansion. Okay. And what we will propose is that we found some of the new parameter. This is uh, we call that the maximum elastic deformation energy, which combine the Young's modulus and the strain and the yielding. Okay, so we want to use this one to predict the stability of SEI. Of course, this one is not a that is straightforward. Actually, we have uh, with the detailed deviation process uh, the, the steps in our paper. Okay, so if you are interested in the details, you can refer to the uh, to the detailed duration in our publications uh, in the in the dual paper. Okay, now if we want to use this uh, deformation energy to predict the stability, so we want to measure the Yang's modulus and also for the strain at the yielding. So this one we we developed a two-step uh, airform-based nano indentation test to measure the two parameter separately. And also here we have some, some of the issues for the answer modulus. For example, here, because this SEI is attached to the substrate, to the active materials, right? So when we do the nano indentation, okay, here, when we press the SEI, this deformation we're going to pass on to, pass it to the substrate, right? So the deformation we merge here is not only a response from the SEI, but also a combined effect from the substrate. Okay. And in the community, people propose that if we only do the indentation depths with a very shallow depths, and this effect can be minimized. But, but what we found is that even we do a very shallow indentation depths, this kind of interference can be also quite large depending on the differences between the answer modulus of your SEI and the substrate. Even we only do the indentation depths around 10% of the thickness of SEI, this interference can bring around 30 to 50 error to the answer modulus of the SEI. That's why we developed, a, we use a, a classical model and we applied to, to our systems to correct the substrate interference to obtain the accurate Yang's modulus values. And then we also, we do the, the second step. So we deliberately break the SEI to merge the yielding strings, and then we can get the, get, get the deformation energies. So here I show you a simple value about the Yang's modulus. So if you want, if you didn't, if you didn't do the uh, correction of the substrate interference, so you see here, this is, uh, this is uh, ignore the substrate effect. This is a considered the substrate effect. You can see the huge differences between them. That means if you do not correct it, you're going to have a huge different, huge errors in the merger of Yang's modulus. And of course, you are going to bring the uh, large error in the deformation energy. And here we will try to uh, verification of this uh, U in predict the stability of the anode. As I see here, we use the potassium metal as a as an example, you see here, we try to correlate the columbic efficiency to the Yang's modulus and to the yielding strain. Neither of them can correlate well with the columbic efficiency. Okay, but if we using the deformation energy, we can find a very good agreement between the columbic efficiency and the, the U value. And this one can be also used in the in the microstructure the particles, for example, for the antimony and for the TN anodes. Still, when you have a higher uh, U value, normally we're going to have uh, an improvement in the cyclic stability because this SEI is stronger enough to support the deformation of uh, the particles during the cycling. Okay, so after we figure out uh, the deformation energy as a predict, so what we can use this one to design the SEI. That means if we want to increase uh, the stabi mechanical stability, what we can do. So here we give you the two examples. First is that 
as we see here before, the U is uh, the combined effect of the modulus and uh, the yielding strain. Okay. And uh, normally, for most of the materials, if you have uh, the organic host species, normally have a higher flexibility. Okay. Because uh, for the U, I showed before, is a two is a proportional to the. Let me see here. You see here, see here, the E, but here to the yielding strain has a power of five. So that means for if you increase this yielding strain, the effect will be more, more clear, okay? That's why here we're using the concentration recognition to regulate the organic and the inorganic species. And then we try to, uh, high, to find the highest the U values. Here we found the in the 0 0.5 more, we can have the abundance of E and the yield strain. We can have the highest U to increase the stability of the of the SER in the potassium metal anodes. And this one, another example is about in the phosphorus anode. In this case, it's hard to increase the homogeneity because in the SEI, if the distribution is not a uniform, you're going to have the stress concentration in some of the regions. This one also will be make the SEI more fragile. So here, if we increase the homogeneity, we can also increase the stability against the volume expansion. I think I don't have enough time to go for the last part. So here, we only give you a very simple idea about the last part. So here, we want to compensate the SEI-induced energy loss. Because in the first, I showed before, in the first cycle, you're going to have the charges consumed by the SEI formation. So we want to know whether we can, we can compensate this energy loss, we can gain this energy back into our batteries. So what we did is that we synthesized some, for example, in the sodium batteries. In the sodium batteries, we're using the, this MVPF cathode and the carbon anode as an example. So in the first cycle, you're going to consume the sodium ions. And then, of course, if we consume, we want to put the additional sodium inside, but we cannot add the the sodium metal directly because this one is very sticky. So what we did is that we synthesized the sodium which the cathode. You see here, purity is three. We found some new phases. We can increase the sodium into four. So with this one, we have additional sodium to be consumed in the first cycle. And then in the second cycle, you're going to have the normal cycling between the cathode and anode. With this one, we can bring uh, energy density increase by around 10% to the full cell. Okay. And for the other, other materials, for the other cathode, some of cathodes, we cannot have the sodium rich phases. What we did is that we made the sodium reservoirs. For example, for this phases, for the NH3P, you have a large amount of sodium in these materials. So we use this one as an ad additive into the cathode with this one. So here, so first in the first cycle, you're going to consume the sodium from the reservoirs. And then in the following cycle, you're going to cycle in between the cathode and the anode. So then with this one, also we can increase the node with the energy density. Okay, so here I give a very brief summary. So first we show that indeed we can, using the SER strategy to stabilize the high, cap high capacity anodes, right? we can use, the, 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 for example, for some of the ether electrolyte, and then we can form a mechanical stable SEI and with this SEI, we can use uh, the micro size particles directly and we can stabilize the cycling performance. And also we have a lot of questions still not answered. For example, here we assume that the SEI is, is very uniform, is, uh, is, a, is a kind of structure like this. But uh, in, the, in, the, in the literature, actually you can still find a, a lot of different, uh, uh, different SEIs with the very distinct nano structures. For example, in here you can find some of the bilayer or, or some of the multi-layer SEI structures. So in these cases, and uh, whether the deformation energy we proposed before can be utilized is still a question. So maybe in the future we need to further analyze the nano structure of SEI, and then we can propose the additional parameters to predict the stability of the SEI in the different nano structures. Okay. So here with this, I, I want to thank the, our uh, group members, the previous group member and uh, the current group members and also the collaborators. And also I would like to thank the funding agency from UGC, from the ECF, from ITF. 
with this one to, to support a small group to work on this SEI strategies in my in point of view. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zhang. So let's go to the Q&A section. Is any uh, questions from the audience? You can directly tap in the chat box or unmute to talk. So is there any questions? Okay. So if no more questions, that will be an end for this section. Let's have several minutes break and come back at uh, 3.30 p.m. Hong Kong time, okay?